Okay, we are going live in a couple of seconds. Okay, awesome. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being early and on time and uh, joining us this evening uh, for our very first portfolio review night. Um, on the spotlight, I have uh, Jay over here, uh, who's the lead UX and visual designer from Grab. Uh, and I'll make a short introduction uh, of him in, in a moment. But just to introduce uh, the program and a little bit about uh, myself. Um, so I'm Dalen. Um, the founder of Curious Core, and I was previously the ex e commerce architect at uh, Razor. And uh, these days, uh, I teach and coach uh, UX designers, uh, teach at Republic Polytechnic, and um, I currently coach like a small group of people um, in helping them to break into the UX industry. So, this uh, webinar idea uh, came as sort of a response to COVID uh, because. Uh, I realized like there wasn't many activities going on uh, online and at the same time uh, uh, that uh, within the design community and then at the same time like people seem to kind of need that kind of guidance uh, because now the tech industry is booming and uh, people are interested to join but they don't have any ideas like how to join. Uh, since I was already in the tech industry and I've helped some of my students break into the industry and I've thought about them before uh, I previously thought for General Assembly. Uh, I thought it would be a good idea to invite some of my friends uh, as well as some of my ex-students to kind of like share uh, their learnings uh, with all of you here. So I'm really glad that you could join us and uh, for Korean who turned on his video, thank you. Thank you so much for turning on your video and being the cool dude uh, over there. And I'm going to spotlight Jay uh, and let me, let me just give him a proper introduction, right? So Jay is uh, not from Singapore. Jay is actually from um, California, Silicon Valley. And he was, he was a hate hunted to join uh, this company called Grab uh, about three years ago, right? And, and Grab wasn't as big as it is today. Uh, so he, he joined the team um, and he kind of like went into different functions within the team and, and help uh, it grew as an app that uh, we all kind of use and love today. And uh, one thing that's interesting about Jay is that he is a multidisciplinary designer. So if you ever go to his website, you'll find that he is a man of many talents and that he is also an adjunct professor uh, when he was back in Silicon Valley for the California College of the Arts. Um, and Jay worked for some of the biggest tech firms we know today, including Pinterest, Twitter, and Yahoo. So this guy's like the OG, man. This is like uh, someone who uh, has worked for some, some of these tech companies and, and were part of the original design team. So uh, yeah, there's that's, that's a lot of talents that Jay has, and I, I wouldn't list all of them, but that uh, is not limited, but includes motion graphics, uh, editing, photography, Xcode, uh, prototyping. So this guy is essentially a unicorn. Um, but I'm, I'm so glad to have him tonight uh, because it's not very often I get a fellow design educator who um, is so passionate about helping uh, the next generation of designers to come in and, uh, and help out. Roland, thank you for sharing. You're an adjunct too. Lovely. Hi, fellow educator. Um, so we have right now about uh, close to 40 people on our Zoom call, uh, and we're expecting about 60 tonight. Uh, so I'm really glad that all of you could join us. Um, so Jay, do you have anything you want to add on um, before we start this uh, portfolio review session? Yeah, I think as a designer, I think... Um... I, I was literally in San Francisco when the iPad and iPhone came out. So I have literally seen like the whole practice go from print design to like web design and then to UX, right? And then everyone wanting to be a UX designer. So um, in general, right, it's, it's not easy. So for 
I, I, I know we're going over UX and visual design. So uh, depending on your aspirations, I definitely have some solid advice I can give to you, especially with the portfolios I've seen here. So uh, that's all I'm gonna say for now, but uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, as cool. a adjunct professor as well, uh, please don't take me seriously as a disclaimer. I think this is for all learning as Dana and I were discussing before. So I'll let you exactly. do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, we we have three brave souls tonight who submitted their portfolio and they allowed us to kind of like just take a look and uh, share what uh, as hiring managers or as uh, design leaders, uh, how we see uh, that they can improve um, in terms of their portfolio. And just a disclaimer, uh, whatever we're saying, whether it's a criticism or a feedback uh, or, or something great, um, it's all for education and learning purposes. It's not, uh, it's not to put anyone down. Um, I, I would like to first uh, kind of uh, salute these three brave souls for allowing us to review their portfolios and uh, their website is also public. So uh, this is really great. Uh, I thank you for that. So one of the brave souls uh, doesn't actually have a UX portfolio. Uh, she actually has a more traditional visual design portfolio and we're gonna review hers in the middle. Uh, but I think it was a great opportunity because knowing JJ uh, did not uh, originally came from UX background either. So he has, he is multi-talented. So I think it's a great opportunity to just um, review these three portfolios and we can all learn from it uh, from this session. So Jay, do you want to take it away and just uh, show the first portfolio? I believe it's Perlin's yeah, sure. portfolio. Perlin, yeah. Okay. So Perlene, if you're here, uh, this is, uh, thank you so much for letting us uh, review your portfolio. Yeah, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Perfect. So this is Perlene's uh, portfolio. Thank you again so uh, for sharing it. And again, like what Dalen said before and I'm reiterating this for learning purposes in general, and I want you guys to improve from it going forward. So Perlene, um, a plus for actually getting a site together. My site looks like trash, but your site looks a hundred look, looks a hundred times better than my site. To be honest, I think when I was looking through this portfolio in general, um, I think you have very strong process. Uh, I love that you have the problem statement, the redesign outcome, you have the flows. This is this is great. This is like UX work, uh, the the rationale and everything that goes into it but I think it's missing a little bit of personality uh, visually, but also um, I'm looking for like, in general, like maybe like a hero image or something to draw the person in, uh, as you know, right? When most people come into a project, I know you have everything below here. Maybe have some imagery on top. I know you have like a lead in image on the homepage, but think about adding something on, on this project per se. I know you also have images on your other works but think about something that leads people in to be drawn into scrolling down because not everybody's going to be looking at this on desktop people are going to be looking at this on mobile right so think about that dylan do you want to add anything as well to yeah, this of course i'll i'll do that um the deep, okay we, we can do this kind of like free flow so it was just kind of like yeah jazz, like it's kind of like yep. jazz isn't it um, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Perlene, thank you once again for sharing. I, I think what was really good about this particular case study, as, as you can see on the screen over here, is that you also shared your prototype, um, which is a Adobe XD prototype. Uh, and I think you, you let people play with, with the prototype over there and let them kind of like click and go that. through and see uh, what's going on. Um, However, I, I, I would have to agree with Jay in terms of like um, having your personality show a little bit. So let's break down and, and, and uh, let me explain to you what I, what I mean by that. Um, Why? When you're, when you're uh, sharing your portfolio, um, it's really important that you talk about um, sort of your point of view on, on something. Right, and uh, what was your role? What was what was your point of view, um, and what really stood out in in, in this project uh, for you? Because this is a group project. Um, you didn't mention like your role, uh, so I, I'm not sure like whether you took on a research role or whether you took on the design role. And if I'm looking at it as your hiring manager and 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 you're applying for like different roles, um, I'm not sure exactly what you're strong at, 
and and that's not immediately clear to me right so if if you're sharing a lot about the process if you're sharing a lot about um the research the evidence um that that would really convince me and persuade me to give you a chance to interview uh because you're sharing with me a lot about uh, your research process but if you're saying hey uh, you applied for a ui role and then you're showing me like uh just wireframes uh which are kind of like lower fidelity over here um, I would not even consider like asking you to come in for an interview because like th that would not be sufficient. So try and think about um, try and think about a little bit more about like what is what is the exact role you want um, in a company uh, and how you can customize uh, and sharpen your portfolio a little bit because I see a little bit of um, I see a bit of research. I see a bit of the process work, uh, but I also see like UI because you talk about, or rather I see kind of like a bit of brand stuff, right? Because uh, you talk about like the colors and stuff like that. So it's, 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 it's not uh, very cohesive and, and it doesn't really say like this one thing that I, I need to take away from the project. Uh, what, what do you think, Jay? Yeah, to add on to that, I think as someone that's hired a bunch of people and also you know, working with recruiters, I think what Dalen said, like, are you a UX designer, a UI designer? What do you want to be? I think you have a really strong process and it really shows. I love that you wrote it down. Um, and I can see it, right? You have the research process, you have the sketches, you have the flows. Um, and of course you have the evaluation, which is awesome. Uh, you have the prototype, which is great. I think what needs to show is your strengths in general. Um, and maybe it's some visual touch-ups. I think uh, as you're seeing in trends, I'm not saying follow trend, but it is nicer, visual pleasing to get those play mock-ups and have your screens in there. That helps so much, uh, especially when you're, you may not be a visual designer, but those things are free. You can get those online, uh, but it helps, you know, tell the story. And I think that's the strong, that, that's one thing that folks, not just you in general, most, most UX designers, uh, especially ones that get out of school early um, and graduate, they fail to tell the real story of, you know, what they did, but how they tell the story about the actual uh, the product that they're working on. Uh, you have the great flow, but what, what's the story? Was there any impact? Is there anything, findings? Were there metrics to it? Even if there weren't metrics, was there an increase of people using it? Tell us more about that. Um, I think you, you have the key factors and learning points down here, but Tell us more and highlight those. I think you highlighted like a few things above, but highlight more uh, more things that stand out, especially if someone's scrolling on a mobile web device, they're gonna, they just have a short attention span. Make sure you have things that stand out and get people's attention to lead them in uh, as, a, as someone that's looking for talent in general. Uh, another thing for your prototype, I love that it's here, but maybe think about adding like a, GIF or GIF, whatever you want to say, how you always say it, uh, that moves a little bit and gives a hint of what your prototype looks like. So people are more like inclined, like, oh, this person can prototype, this is cool. And add what you prototype with so people know what your prototyping skills are, right? Is it with Figma? Is it with um, Xcode? Whatever it is, right? Uh, make sure you call that out. Make sure you call out your talents because then your characteristics pop out. And I'm more inclined to be like, oh, I want to talk to this designer. This is great. Um, Dalen, do you want to add to that as well? Yeah, or yeah. Shall we I'll, I'll, love, I'll love to add to that. Um, so Jay has a really good point about storytelling. I was, I was just talking to one of my ex-interns um, uh, about a couple of days ago, and he went uh, to study at the Art Center College of Design, and, and he's working in San Francisco right now as a UX designer. And I, I say, like, how, how did one of the world's best design colleges prepare you for your portfolio? And, and he said, you know what, um, one of the things that he took away, I mean, he shared a bunch of other things, which I, I share during my uh, group coaching program. Uh, but one of the things he shared is that don't review too much in your website. And, and he said, you know what, it's kind of like you're at the bar and you kind of want to show a little bit, but then you don't want to show too much, right? You don't want to get right into the action because you want them to invite you uh, to come in and also like share the full process and, and, and the details. And if they are interested, they will most likely like invite and call you. 
So um, as Jay mentioned um, about story, right? Uh, telling a good story is so important because it really uh, sticks into our brain and, and we're hardwired to respond to stories. So a good story structure that you can consider um, is actually to think about uh, what is the current state, right? So you talked about that and you showed that in your design, right? But us, tell, tell us a little bit more about the current state in words, you know, what was the problem that your client was struggling, you know, uh, what, what did they encounter, what were the challenges, and then uh, tell, uh, and then show your process, and then show the future state, right, which is the, the work that you did, and how did that work uh, solve all the problems that the client, client had, or did it solve the problem, or was it still a work in progress, and just kind of like back it up with evidence, back it up with testing, um, and if they are interested enough, uh, especially if it's a client that's like uh, has has projects that involves like maps and and uh, a lot of information, they're gonna be like, hey, uh, would you mind coming in and telling us a little bit more about this project? Like, how did you kind of sort out the information and the content? Right? What was your content strategy and and things like that? So that was uh, that. That's actually all you need to uh, say. You just need to say your story. You just need to back it up with um, evidence pieces. You don't have to present the entire full uh, case study as it is um, and get them to invite you to their office so that you can talk about it. So not sure you have anything yeah. to add, Jay. I think one of the things is, and I'm reading the learning points again, uh, this is a refresher. I think you know, this is your first time through the design process. So kudos, I, I know. Uh, we may be being a bit critical, but we're trying to improve <laughs> your uh, design as well. I think one of the things that also um, designers fail to do in, in any of their work is the follow-up. Like, what is the follow-up to the design? Is there like something happening? What, what's going on with it? Uh, do you have like any metrics for the follow-up or is there something being done? Are you taking on the lead for it? Well, tell, tell us like a little bit more. And then more people are inclined like, oh, awesome. This person's still working on this. This person's expertise is on maps or experiences uh, for navigation, whatever it is. Um, just tell us more about that and what's going to happen uh, with the project. I think that's important, especially if you're a UX designer. You want to make sure that you have total, I don't want to say mastery, but at least awareness of what's happening with the project or what's going to happen, the next steps and whatnot. Yeah. So, Colleen, uh, if you have anything to add or to ask or to clarify, uh, please feel free to like unmute yourself and, and speak. Um, we don't want this to be a monologue. Um, but if there isn't any, just let us know too. Uh, has this been helpful for you? Jay, would you like to talk a little bit about her, like the way she presented it on her homepage instead of just at the case study level? Like how, how did she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, I think she did a really good job with the hero images uh, per se, because they're large, they're easy to find, especially on a mobile device. Uh, obviously, for me as a visual designer, these could be a lot better visually done, uh, especially with, uh, with with things I've seen out there from other designers, as you especially like specialized UX designers. So like I said, look, look, they're, they're free. The clay devices are free. There's a lot of things that are free, template wises, uh, especially if you're going to really, if you're really passionate about your career as a UX designer, uh, and it goes both ways, UX or UI, invest, invest in that, invest in your portfolio. Uh, I, like I said, my portfolio looks like trash, but I invested <laughs> in a, it, it, I invested in a really nice presentation that I created by myself and I send that. I don't send my website because I'm, I'm coding <laughs> my old website right now and it, it's, it's hard, but kudos to you. Uh, Perlin for putting this together because I, I give you props. This looks way nicer than my current site. But like I said, <laughs> if you really want people to look at you and stand out, really invest in yourself. Get get these tools to make yourself stand out. Uh, and and we'll, we'll see that in the next portfolio, what I'm yeah. talking about. But in general, right, mm -hmm. the little things matter to people. Uh, and you, I, I know this is great. As a, this is a good start, actually. Uh, so there's like nothing bad I have to say, just tweak it a little bit more. Uh, and, and I think one thing that's missing on like what Dalen uh, talked about, you have the title, but talk about your role. What's your role on this above, right? Layer it on top. Uh, I, I have to dig deep just to find out like what you're doing, what your role is in general. But I want to know instantly what you did, what, what was your role 
Um, and I, I guess uh, what else was done on it? Like give us, give us like, I don't know, two highlights from this uh, other than easing navigation then NTU campus, is there anything else? Uh, give us like two important points that stand out in your role. And I think yeah. that'll help people like uh, find out like what your skills are, characteristics are, cause that'll stand out. Yeah, that's really cool, Jay. Um, so uh, before we take questions from the chat, uh, I also wanted to say, because we look at your CV and I think one of the things that uh, you do have an advantage over the other designers is that you understand front end coding. Right, that that needs to also uh, be shared that, that uh, a lot sure. more, and yeah. that needs to be because that's a very rare skill, right? A designer who can actually code is is rare. Like they are unicorns, right? Like I say, so you need to you need to let that stand out a little bit more, and let that be like your personal brand because you have this engineering mindset, and tech companies are really going to value that um, because you understand code and you understand what's needed. So uh, please mention that uh, more often. Okay. Yeah, uh, Jay, I, we have I agree a, with that. We have a question from Lynn. Yeah. Uh, she said uh, in chat, uh, I link my case studies to Behance instead of having everything written in the website. Is that an okay thing to do or is it advisable to have everything laid out on the website? I think that's fine. I think you just have to make sure that you have a link or a clickable image that goes somewhere else. Uh, but as someone that is, you know, uh, that wants to get things e easily seen or wants to see things easily seen, you may want to put your best uh, shots on your website and then have the rest on your Behance, right? Like, hey, mm -hmm. this is my, my portfolio. Uh, this is my project, I mean. Um, and then if you want to find out more, come to my Behance. But like I said, uh, you have to tell the story really quickly with those, whatever, however you want to compress it or condense it and um, make sure people understand what you've done. And uh, if, you, if you want them to look at your work on Behance, that's totally fine. Uh, there are a lot of designers that still have their work on Behance and uh, I think that's not a bad thing actually. Uh, but yeah. just, just make sure you have a website that people can find you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Jay, we have a second question from Amanda. Uh, Amanda asks, is there a preferred format slash platform to present our case studies for a portfolio? Should it be a responsive website or a PDF deck? You know, what's the advantage or disadvantage? Yeah. Yeah. So advantages, obviously, I because I can speak from personal experience. I think having a website says a lot about you, uh, especially if you uh, created it yourself, which is awesome. Uh, I, I think nowadays you can get a templated website easily. So I, I don't know why people would code, but if you do code, that just shows how cool you are in general. That just makes you stand out, right? I, I think well, sure. as someone that codes, I coded my own website from, and I like deviated from the template. So I, I tell that to the people and people are impressed. So I think, yeah, if you code your own website, do that, but you can also create your own PDF, but have something, have something out there. So you exist on the internet. Uh, I like, I have a PDF of my work, like I mentioned before, and it's a really nicely designed. Uh, I designed it in Keynote. Um, it has like external links from like to animated GIFs or animated prototypes. Mm. So it's well thought out, right? Um, if you do a presentation, make sure that you include all these like links that go to like these things that move because people want to see that. Um, I think that's the hardest part with a PDF in general, but I've gotten buys, but uh, if you do a website, <laughs> do have something like, if, like if you're, you have prototypes, do have that on there. People want to see how talented you are and your your prototype chops in general, um, and that you know people are picking up pro prototyping so easily. There's so many tools out there. You should be able to do that. Don't be scared to pick that up. I think it's so easy to prototype nowadays. So yeah, uh, you can even prototype on Keynote. Like, come on, <laughs> like it's so easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and to add on, I mean there are. Uh, great sites like Wix or Squarespace, which really makes it very easy for you to just um, have a website and, and do it in one day. So that's that's something you can come up with. Um, well, we have a coaching client, Razi, uh, who is uh, asking a question and he said, he asked like for prototype or process, do I need to lay out my skeletal process? Uh, example, sketches or drawn mock-up. I think... And I'll also give this feedback 
on the next portfolio. I think sketches and the thought process are so important. I think in general, people want to see that. Uh, and if you don't want to show it on your site, at least have like a link to like your thought process. Because for me, I know it's not like this in Singapore. P like when I interview people, I literally ask them, hey, let's wireframe some ideas and brainstorm on a whiteboard together. Because I want to see how I work with this person and their thought process. And if I can see those sketches or, or how you flow things out in your thought process in general and your rationale in something, then I can see at least you're thinking about like the problem you're thinking about, you know, the limitations on a, on a project, whether it's technology or the device that it's on. Um, like uh, I, I interviewed somebody that drew hand-drawn sketches for their problem statements and whatnot. And I'm not telling you to do that, but that impressed me enough to be like, I want to talk to this person because this person thought about everything from the illustrations to like the actual problem. And he's a really, he's not a visual designer at all. He's, he just knows how to draw really well, but he's not a visual designer, but, but he's a really good UX designer. So uh, I think that's important to show your thought process. It's, it's important to um, illustrate that you have that um, rationale in solving problems because uh, if you interview with like someone like me and I ask you to brainstorm right on the spot uh, for like 30 minutes and you don't, you can't draw that up, then what my thinking is your skill set on your site doesn't match what your skill set is in person. So please, like uh, I would try <laughs> to at least have your thought process out there. Cool. Thanks, Jay. Um, I think in essence of time, we should move on. Um, so shall Hi, we go to- Hi, Jay and Jaylen, Perlin here. Hey, Perlin. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Um, I have a question. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Say if it's a project that is not something that's public and maybe handles more personal sensitive data, how do we, how do we showcase such projects? Password protect, password protect <laughs> or have yes. an SPF. That, that's the sneaky way to do it. And I'm not promoting that, but that's how I've gotten my work out there. I literally create a personal site or PDF with the password on it, heavily protected, and just you just send that out. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of designers that do that too, so. And, and okay. just to add on, I think if there's really any private information, like a client name or, or something like that, and or client email or actual real emails, uh, just kind of like blank it out before you uh, even put it out there on the interwebs. So that's general that's advice. I'm gonna fake a logo on it too. Yeah, if you have to, I've done that, so yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, great, thank you. All right, Clara, if you're here, uh, we're reviewing your portfolio next. So let's uh, let's take it. Uh, this will this will be more your expertise, Jay. I I'm, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not <laughs> well, like okay. a brand visual designer, but I, I can comment no, no, on. This is, I have some, this is, this is good yeah. though. I like yeah. if you're not a brand visual designer, that means I can get even better feedback from you because I can already, already react to it. And now, okay, let's, let's let, okay, let's continue jazzing that. <laughs> yeah. So how do you how do you feel about this website now? Looking okay. At, at, um, as, all right. Okay. So let me start first. I, I think Clara, your, uh, your website has a very distinct voice. So I say it from the perspective that um, you have very distinct client profiles, which are very fashion or, or female led and female consumer centric, right? That is a great niche to be in because immediately when I come to your website, what really st stands out for me is that, well, this designer has the feminine touch. If I'm a brand owner, if I'm the CEO of a company that reaches out and does marketing or does a work uh, that reaches out to female consumers, especially young female consumers, I'm going to like more likely call you up and tell you, hey, Claire, you work with all these great brands. What, what, what can you do for me? So I think that was immediately um, uh, very distinct from the color palette, uh, from the photography. Uh, and for all, all the different elements uh, that you put together on, on the site. So that's, that's something I wanted to share. Yeah, to add on to that, I, uh, I, I don't know. For me, I'm, I'm a sucker for these things where I'm like, hi, my name is <laughs> this and this. It's so simple. And like when I look at my mobile, my, my mobile device, dude, like I, I already know what you're doing. So like this is also for like UX designers out there because I, I, I know there are UX designers out there that struggle with visual. But take some cues from this. I think 
uh, in general, it's pretty strong type of typographically. Uh, it, like if you look on look at it on mobile device, it's easy. You know what, what this person does. Um, obviously, the hero images are pretty strong because they're a visual designer, uh, and it's just very simple and elegant in general. Now, to deep dive a little bit, like yes, you have all these beautiful um, photos and props to you for putting this together. This is this is wonderful. I, I love this. I think one of the things that is missing from this in general is the story actually, because uh, compared to what we saw in Fair Lens, right? It was very strong process, a little bit uh, of the story, but what gets lost is what your role is, because you talk about the project type, the solutions, challenges, but what was your actual role? Who, who are you that did this? Was there any other like explorations that you did on this? And if you don't, if you can't show it, that's fine. But I would rather, if I'm hiring a visual designer, I wanna see your mess ups. Like I actually wanna see like the ones that got tossed and I wanna ask why. Um, Cause when we hired our illustration, il illustrator uh, at Grab, like he showed us his like his mess ups or his F ups, right? And they were like, why did you toss this out? This is beautiful, right? But it just mm -hmm. shows you like your range of talent in general. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is pretty strong visually, right? Uh, strong. And like everything to a T, like you said, Dalen, there's a style to it that, um, and you see it in the other projects, it's very strong, uh, but you're, you're lacking the process. And I, I know some, some agencies out there wanna see the process and the story to it. Uh, and then I know I'm gonna call this out as well. Uh, this needs to be better visually processed. I know you have it in the phone, but make it more elegant. You already have that strong, elegant style going through. Uh, and it's, it's so nice that this phone's like, could be a lot better. <laughs> I'm sorry, it could be a lot better visually done because you, you did such a good job putting things together and then it just comes to the visual phone uh, mobile device. And I'm just like, oh, man, that could be a lot better. So what, what do you think she, she should have done, Jay? Like, may, should he add a hand or should it be like an in-situation kind of like shot? What do you think? It could be in-situation. It could be, um, yeah, I think one of those, uh, that's and that's that's another thing I kept talking about before, right? Invest in those things or create it yourself. I created it myself. I literally shot my friend holding <laughs> a phone and I photoshopped my screen onto it. So wow. Um, and I, but listen, like she did a really good job. Uh, but I feel like you could do that and uh, think about like the little things because people are going to look and ask about this in general, Claire. So they're going to ask like. They may not ask up front, but they're going to ask probably to another designer. It's like, what do you think? This looks like this, but they did a good job arranging everything else, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. That that's just something people will ask and nitpick about in general. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I'll add to what Jay said. Uh, I think one of the biggest mistakes uh, that designers make uh, is that they are too humble, right? Um, and I don't I don't mean it in a bad way, right? It's good to be humble at at the right moments. Um, but like they're, they're overly humble to the extent that they don't even put their client testimonials on their website. So if someone comes to your website, uh, we can reasonably assume that they are interested in your work and or at least like uh, who you are as a person. And they wanna kind of know and, and understand a little bit like who, who, what is it like working with Claire uh, as a person, right? Who is she like and, and what's the face behind it? You know, what do, what do people say about her uh, when, when uh, they're working with her? So don't, don't just kind of like hide that and just put the work up front, but also kind of tell uh, that story, but uh, also share with people who are on your website, like who you are as a person. Let the client testimonials do the talking, let your teammates testimonial do the talking. Yeah. Um... Yeah, this is this, this one project. Do you want to do you want to pause and look at questions first, or um, I don't keep... think there were there are questions for um, Claire. Unless right. Claire, you have questions, feel free to kind of like respond. Yeah, Jay, why don't you go for the next point first? Yeah, I mean, like I said, there's a specific style that you pointed out, which is inherent in all these, and it's great. I love it. Uh, as someone that is a visual designer, I, I love this. This this is great. Yeah, it man. just stands out. It shows like uh, how strong their creativity is. But again, like what is their role? What is the process? Uh, is there what 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 did you do to get to this point? I think that's that's the thing that people miss in general because um, that type of thing. And, and 
in, it, that stands out for me as if I'm hiring a visual designer. And that, I, I can say that for other recruiters and uh, other leads, right? They don't want to just see the end product. They want to see the beginning to end. And that's, that is what stands out in general. Did you do your research? Did you look at what did you get your influence on? Um, what, 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 why did you go this direction? Did you try something else? Uh, people don't want someone that just thinks in like a tunnel vision type of way. Um, because in general, we want to see if you stretch the limits for this project, whether it's UX or visual. And that's really important as, as a visual designer. You need to show the breadth of work and the story visually in general. Yeah. And, and I'll add, I, I'm not sure, it, it does sound like from your initial homepage that you are a lady of many talents. Uh, and because of that, I, I wonder if you could actually tell people that you, you take, you might have taken these photos for yourself. And if you have done that, please tell people because that these are some seriously amazing photos. So yeah. if, you, if you take, if you took those photos, um, yeah, like, like I, I would, I'll be even more impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like like this, right? I, I know it's generic and everyone's doing it, but dude, it looks so nice. When, <laughs> it when does. People do this, like it looks so nice. Yeah. So I encourage any UX designers, don't just put the screenshot up there. Try to embellish it a little bit more and in, in, invest, like I said, in yourself and get these mock-ups or maybe your friend has them for free. Like literally, like I know people that have them and I can just ask and they'll give them for free. So ask around, make connections. I think everyone should be putting them in like nice layouts or play mock-ups because that, that will stand out visually. It, and I can't say how many times I've hired somebody and they were just as talented because they, they cared about those details. So this is cool. Uh, and I love that you have a video, but going back to that previous, uh, what do you call it, uh, project, like try to try to make it nicer in this in this fashion. This will stand out a lot more than just the screen. Yeah, uh, Jay. I I guess one of the things that uh, a previous attendee asked before is like, if, if you're this multi-talented designer, I, I always wanted to ask you this question, right? If you're this multi-talented designer with many skills, how how should you position yourself? Because if let's say you can do photography, you can do design, you can you can do this and that, you can code. Like how how should you kind of like let your portfolio speak? Because if if everything speaks, then it, it's not saying anything. Uh, well, I think I've gotten by in general by I I, I literally did this, Dalen. I created two portfolios, one for UX specific and one for visual specific. So I ended up rocking two portfolios for a while that if someone asked for like a UX portfolio, I would send it to them. And then uh, if they're asking for a visual portfolio, I would send that to them. So Got it. I would do that for almost like a lot of my mid career. Now I'm like at the leadership position where it doesn't really matter as long as I talk about the story and the process. Yeah. Uh, so what, what I embellish now is just leading, growing a team, uh, how I built this with a team how I supported folks, how I grew mm. a team, how I grew the metrics, uh, how I grew like GMV or metrics, what, whatever, right? Because yeah, yeah. it's, it's now more about what you did on the project, the metrics, the impact in general, it doesn't matter. You may have the talent, but what did you actually do for the business is now the most important part uh, as you get older in your career. Because uh, that's why I encourage people to talk about that story because when you get older, uh, that's why now a lot of work goes online. <laughs> right? It's about how you, what you did for the business in general. It's not about your personal work. And yeah, showing what you've done for a business through those numbers, through those metrics in that portfolio tells the story and tells the impact of what you've done as a designer. And that that stands out as you get older. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so Clara says she doesn't have any questions. Uh, she 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 thanks us and she's taking a lot of notes right now so claire thank you for letting us review your uh, portfolio uh, she also mentioned some of the photos are taken by her and some by others um so, so yeah good. yeah it's so good yeah you're um, gonna say that people people are gonna love that and yeah <laughs> yeah I call it, that out. it shows you have a great eye claire like you do have a great great eye so kind of a, a use that visual to uh to your advantage um it shall will, we go to yeah, shall we go yeah. to the next one? Yeah, yeah.
All right. So Adila, if you're there, we're reviewing your portfolio. Lara, I'll take your question uh, in a bit after we review Adila's one. Okay, so I'll go. start because we started last time. Yeah, sure, man. <laughs> That's nice. I like this portfolio because it's like a mix between Perlins and Claire's almost. I like <laughs> that you picked this one, actually. It's like a almost like a child between the both. Mm. It's, it's, it tells me exactly what they're doing. Uh, has like a hero image. Like I instantly know what she's about. The skills are right there. Um, like available for hire. I think some people especially miss out on this. I think uh, if, if someone's freelancing, say that, right? Because most people right now, yeah, they may be hiring that, but a lot of people are looking for remote designers right now. And it's amazing that uh, you should call that out. Tell us what you, what you actually, what your uh, work status is. Are you working right now in Singapore? Are you open to other uh, roles outside of Singapore and then you can remote, whatever. But yeah, no, this is great. I, I like this uh, very strong in general uh, of the personality that comes out like you were talking about in the past two portfolios. It's, 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 it occurs to me that what this person can do and what they are capable of. Uh, and then we'll just like, do you, oh, before that, do you wanna add on to the homepage as well? Um, no, I, I agree with all your points. Uh, you can, you can go on. I'll add in, add on later. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with this one. So I feel like, uh, this could be a lot better than imagery for a web interface system revamp for medical clinics. So why is it copied is my question <laughs> uh, as someone, as a designer, right? You're going to get this question. Why did you put this as your image? Uh, I, I mean, I understand maybe by reading some of it, but uh, why did you why did you pick that in the first place? Uh, you have your role here, which is great. Industry project time, that's awesome. You obviously have your process, which is well done, by the way. I love this. Um, it you have the persona, which is cool. Like not a lot of people have personas, or for some reason people think personas are bad. They are not <laughs> a bad personas. They're still a thing. I can't stress that enough. Um, but I think one thing that stands out to me is like yes, you have the before and after. Uh, which is great, by the way, but I think they, sh they should be in devices. They should just be standing out whether they're in a photo format, whatever, right? Because I think it just, it'll look better. Trust me, just maybe just do it in one. You don't have to do it for all. All that's is just putting it in a nicer way. I, I know that you're calling it out for all these things, but the orange gets a little bit lost in here, um, <laughs> right? So I think you need to call out um, the things that you've done in a better way. I don't know what it, that would look like, but for me, when I was first scrolling this, I know you. I know it's your calling out that you did this the before and after, but it's a bit unclear because you had these orange boxes. Like, is this part of the design? And then I started to read a little bit more. And it, especially if you're looking on a mobile device, it's like, why are there orange boxes around these things? Uh, did this person do this intentionally, right? So just call that out a little bit more uh, in a better way. Um, you'll have to figure it out. Uh, I could go on for like, minutes on that but Dylan, what do you think yeah i i, I think uh, what's really strong uh and that stood out to me is your process once again and that you took uh the effort to document it i i would even go like one level beyond uh because at the end of the day we're we're designing for people right we're designing for uh, real human beings so if you could mention you know what was the impact um, that your design made after the uh, after the design was implemented, or was it implemented, or at least how did the client feel about it? Um, the design, right? Did it meet their requirements? That would actually be helpful. And on Jay's point of telling a story, like did you had to make a compromise um, at some point during the project? I, because I would imagine you probably done a bunch of research, and maybe your client. Uh, disagree with with your, with your points like how how did you then present the evidence and and what what happened because that's all part of telling a good story in this case um what's really i i would say in terms of visuals that's lacking would be like the people um and and especially the real people who were impacted by this project so i'm not sure if you could get it uh but it would be helpful if you can um, I know you also asked this question, like, should you get an NDA before you, uh, before you yeah. sort of like share prototype links? What, what do you think, Jay? Um, 
it depends on the situation and depends on the company, to be honest. Uh, if you did something for like a Facebook or Google, yeah, you need that NDA. Uh, but that being said, <laughs> people are going to still do it, right? So um, just be cautious on what you share in general. I think most people from most designers I know are understanding, especially the ones that are hiring. Like they'll ask like, oh, if you can't show, it's fine. Uh, just show us like some of your older work. But if you don't have any older work, like I said, rebrand it in a way that doesn't look like that brand. Uh, and that may be a lot of work, but hey, if you want that job, you'll do it. Mm. <laughs> Guaranteed. Uh, and I've done that a couple of times. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, the NDA, it depends. It depends on the, your timeline. It depends on a lot of things in general. It's a good to have, but when you're rushing and you need to get something out to people, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have to figure out a way to get the work in front of their face if you really yeah. want that job. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I I I think um, sometimes it's uh, well, this is going on record, so I probably shouldn't say this. <laughs> but uh, like like what Jay suggested earlier, you can always password protect if if that's one of your concerns, just password protect the prototype. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so B72, I don't know what's your name. Um, I, uh, you ask whether, like, how do we present the compromise in the portfolio? Um, I, don't, I don't mean that you exactly have to say like there was a compromise, uh, but I think it's all part of telling a good story, right? Uh, um, good stories have tension. And like maybe you discovered something initially, but then your research proved you otherwise, right? It really tells people that you're, well, a portfolio is supposed to speak for you, right? And, and um, it tells people that you're a designer that's willing to listen to evidence. Uh, if you say, I can change my opinion, I can change my problem statement because of uh, the research that insights that I got um, that, uh, that allowed me to reshape the project a little bit and uh, and kind of like get the project on the right track instead. So kind of think about what are the qualities you want to tell people when, when you're sort of laying the work out in the case study. Yeah. So to add on to that, I think uh, in general, uh, how do you show that? For me, I will literally show the first iteration of what I'm redesigning, like what it looks like. And then I would show maybe like one or two uh, things that were discussed. Uh, it could be something that was an experiment. It could be something that was about to be, be the final solution and then got shot down. But you can write next to it, right? You can still write and uh, um, iterate on, on what you say, right? So tell, tell the story why it got shot down. Was it because it didn't create enough value for the product is because users, uh, when you researched it, didn't tap on the, uh, you know, CTR, call to action, uh, CTA, sorry, call to action. Uh, is there not enough click through rates, which is like click C CTR, like tell us why. And that, that just shows that you have empathy. That just shows you're thinking about the user, the things about you're thinking about the experience. So it's so important to show that because people are wanting to understand your thought process. So, yeah, show show your trade offs because it, it it matters actually. Mm. Cool. Hey guys, I'm Adila here. So, hey Adila. Uh, I just have a question. So um, actually, the plan the, uh, when I did this case study, what I had in mind was um, not to make it so in depth, such that when I have to come for interview and present, right, the mm. PDF will be in more in detail. So that's why I, I didn't put a lot of details in. So some of the points that you guys mentioned, actually, I, I do have it, but I never mm. include it in. So is it better to put it in detail on the website or wait until I'm I'm called for an interview, then when I present it in, on the PDF, then it's more detailed? Well, uh, yeah, Adil, uh, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to turn that question back to you. So based on what we've described so far in the entire session, um, what what do you think makes sense? Like, what are the things you might you you think makes sense to to add on your website? And then, what are the things that make sense for you to show only when you're in the interview? I guess maybe um, showcase some of the highlights and story on the website, and then maybe 
uh, those like for example constraints or lesson learned or things that didn't go things that went wrong maybe you can share it during interview yeah like yeah that. yeah that's perfect um yeah and like you can also add like hey if you want to see more talk to me then it gets people <laughs> yeah, to like, exactly yeah, yeah. It, it does i i think people really uh put l little effort into content i can't tell you how much content actually alters like the decision to look Perception. at someone or actually bring yeah. them in it actually matters right dylan like yeah <laughs> like yeah. I can't just not, like, have those teasers like if you want to see more for sure like so that so that should be at the end of the screen is that it? like a city oh, yeah like, for sure for sure yeah at the end. <laughs> you can definitely do that you have have a call to action for every case study um and and before before i went into tech right i was a marketer and uh, and, and of course, now I'm an entrepreneur. I had to do a lot of marketing work myself. Um, think of it as a trailer. Think of it as a hook. You know, what, what is that hook going to be? So the homepage, that's your first hook, right? The first hook is for you to get them to look at the work in detail, right? So what do you need to put to get them to look at your work in detail? And when they look at your work and you get them a little bit more, so you kind of like review a little bit more, um, then, you, then you tell a good story, right? You kind of like show the trailer. Hey, this is like what happened and, and things like that. So get them interested in uh, reaching out and, and calling you in for an interview. And of course, make it very, very easy for them uh, in the process to reach out to you as well. So that's, um, I think that summarizes what we said. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Adila. Once again, uh, it's um, it's an honor to review your portfolio, and thanks for sharing. Well, I, I have one more question, though, mm. um, because yeah. the thing is, I have other works such as um, branding design and website design, but that's um, so I, I was confused. I was a bit in a dilemma where I whether should I include them in inside this portfolio or will that um, like. Like, like, will that distract from the UX case studies? Can pick your best, like a, like everyone says, right? Limit the amount of work, but piss, uh, pick pick quality over quantity in general. Okay. Like if, if, if it's really good, then put it up there. Uh, but I, I really like the, if there's a mixture though, between like visual and uh, UX work, then you, you're going to have to tell more of that story and, and really lay that out more so because that that ends up taking more screen space in general okay. right so i think yeah i think jay's suggestion uh on playing to your strengths is is great advice and i, I would even ask you the question uh like what kind of work do you want to get more like do you want to get more ux work or do you want to get more visual brand work right mm. which, which one's more lucrative for you as a freelancer um like have a think about that and if if you're if you determine uh, it's either one of, of, of the other, then show that more because you want to gradually build up um, the portfolio of the work that you enjoy doing, but also gets you paid well. Um, in this case, okay, yeah, thanks, guys. Lovely, cool. Um, I think we're kind of done with portfolio reviews. Uh, is there any? Last one or two questions uh, from the audience. If not, I will. Like a lot of people chatting. Yeah, we, we still have like 50, around 50 people, uh, 50 engaged audience here. Um, love it. Guys, can you can you type in chat? Has this been a helpful session for you? If, if, it, if it has been, please, please type your, your, your comments in chat. Right, Vikram says yes. Thanks, Vikram. Awesome. What about the rest of the forty-seven people? <laughs> forty-seven people. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, brave souls. Yeah, exactly. This is awesome. Okay, cool. Um, Jay, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, thank you for yeah. reviewing. I'm just gonna kind of uh, go through some of the upcoming events that we have. Lovely, thank you so much, guys. Uh, so I'm gonna take a couple of minutes. We, uh, if you're interested, please feel free to kind of stay, uh, hang around for a bit. Uh, I'm gonna share what are the upcoming events <clears throat> that's coming up. All right, so um, if you love this webinar series and if you learned something from this webinar series and you wanna talk about it, 
Uh, I welcome you to share your learnings on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, please use the hashtag leaning into change uh, because we're, uh, many of us here are trying to break into the industry and trying to use UX as a process to change. So uh, what I will do for you, because I think I have most of your emails here, um, you will, I will send you a 12 page UX career guide, uh, which includes interview questions that people commonly ask, uh, as well as the salary uh, of a UX designer in Singapore. And uh, I mean, that's kind of iffy, but I got it from Payskill. Um, that's a rough and, <laughs> Yeah, that's a rough gauge. And, and then uh, there are also like uh, a presentation of like who's hiring. Jay, I think, I think Grab is hiring junior designers, am I right? Uh, not her, I mean, we're looking for interns. <laughs> I can tell oh, you you're that. looking for interns. Okay, cool. So Jay's looking for interns. So feel free to reach out to Jay um, over LinkedIn uh, if you if you if you like him to consider uh, an opportunity to work with him. Jay's great. Um, and at the same time, if we are doing uh, weekly workshops, uh, which are intro to UX workshops, these are workshops I use to conduct at uh, General Assembly. Uh, they are they are about two hours long. Um, and it helped people like Neverlin from Grab uh, break into the industry and, and just kind of like gave her like this foundation and scaffold uh, to get her interested in the industry itself. So if you're interested, uh, these are voluntary donation bases because it's COVID. Um, so it's up to you if you'd like to donate, but feel free to come. If you're in our list, uh, you definitely receive an invitation um, after this webinar for the following Monday and next Monday, all right? So for next week, we are, uh, I'm gonna get one of my ex students, uh, Elson. He works in China. So he's gonna dial in from uh, China and he's gonna share a little bit about what he does as a UX design expert for Alibaba games, uh, where they make uh, games uh, for the Chinese market. So he's gonna share a little bit about that. Uh, but Elson used to work for Ubisoft uh, here when he was a student of mine, he came for one of my classes. So I'm gonna, probably going to ask him to share a little bit about uh, the experience of working overseas as a UX designer and what's the, what's the climate like in China for the UX industry. Uh, how can you, you know, break into an overseas market uh, and work uh, for an overseas company, right? Like a big brand like Alibaba. So I'm going to get him to talk all about that. And the following week, if you like us to uh, review your portfolio, uh, us meaning um, inviting a peer who is Edgar from um, the head, head of CX for and Design at Canon Australia. Uh, he is someone who was based in the US and then he uh, shifted to Australia and he's now leading a team over there. And uh, if you like us to review your portfolio, uh, there's gonna be another portfolio session um, in the following week uh, on Wednesday, so 3rd of June, 2020. If you need the dates, uh, I'm gonna share with you the link where you can check out all the dates. Okay, for some of you, um, this program is not for everyone, but we got a handful of um, uh, students or a handful of professionals together who wanna break into the industry and I designed a online group coaching program for them uh, to help them build their portfolio. And we're gonna do sessions like that and more, right? We're gonna actually uh, be working with real clients and real projects. Uh, and we're gonna add additional like four digital projects uh, into the portfolio. And I'm helping them shape their personalized career strategy in this case. I'm keeping this group to like less than 10 people. So I have less than like five. One, one person's like considering right now, but I already have five people. So I have less than five seats right now. So if you still wanna like join us um, and join this, group of people, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, it's admissions at curiouscore.com or you can reach out to me at dalen at curiouscore.com. And I'll be inviting like uh, in private sessions uh, for, for uh, the de design leader to review the portfolio. So uh, we don't do this publicly, but um, there's also a lot to learn from this, okay? So if you need any information and uh, if you're tuning in on Facebook Live, thank you for tuning in. Um, please check us out on curiouscore.com if you would like to get onto the list. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen.
in a minute. Is there any questions? Uh, let's see. Great feedback points dialogue. I think there's money to be made with an app that allows users <laughs> to join someone as they work from home. Okay, ideas. Uber needs an update. All right, Ivy. <laughs> cool, thank you. Thank you all for the well wishes, uh, lovely. So, um, Jay, I, I mean, Adila is asking if she if she's gonna like uh, improve on that portfolio. Would you would you mind giving some follow up feedback? Yeah, sure. I'm I'm down. I'm I'm also part of the the ADP list too. I think coaching, mentoring, like lovely and designer. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. I'm down. Cool. Over. So reach out to to Jay on on LinkedIn. Uh, Jay, hire me, please. I'll make you breakfast every morning. That that's a compelling proposition. What do you think, Jay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is that is nice, but uh, <laughs> what I can do. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right, uh, guys. Thank you so much uh, for for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, so, someone gave me a suggestion, but I'll, I'll I'll take some time to read your comments later. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to wave you off. Um, have, a, have a good week, everyone. Uh, for those of you who are attending the workshop, I'll see you next Monday. Uh, if not, uh, yeah, I'll see you next Wednesday for our regular webinar series. So goodbye. Good night. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, good night. Uh, yes, Cindy, this is um, for someone who wants to break into a career in tech. It's very focused on that. Uh, but if you like to find out more, you can email me. I'm going to put my email here. Uh, so it's, oops, sorry. I forgot to put it to everyone. Hang on. Thank you, Clara. Thanks for letting us review your portfolio. Okay, Cindy, yeah, you can email me and um, I'll send you more details if, and we can chat over the phone, like what your career goals are and things like that. It's not for everyone. Um, you have to have the desire to break into the tech industry. So it's very focused on that. Okay. If there's any questions, feel free to email me. Um, Dalen signing out. Good night, everyone.